We did it. We did it, people. 1,000 subscribers. The equivalent of a large auditorium of people all watching me sit here in my room and stare at a camera. That is very strange. That's not an experience I've had before. You know, a couple months ago, I made a joke video on my channel, uh, which was advice for how to get your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, because I thought it would be funny for somebody who has like 90 subscribers to make a video about advice for getting 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, but never did I imagine that only a couple months later, I would actually be at this point. By the standards of my past, uh, this growth has happened incredibly quickly. I had been hovering around 90 subscribers pretty much stagnantly for years, uh, up until last month. And, and just in the past month and a half, um, the growth has been so explosive that I've hardly been able to keep up with it. I wish I knew what caused this growth, um, but I honestly have no idea. I think the algorithm just decided to be benevolent to me with that one Brandon Sanderson video I uploaded a couple months ago. But other than that, it's been really incomprehensible to me and I just feel very fortunate um, to have made this benchmark that less than 9% of YouTubers actually get to. So thank you so much for checking out the channel, sincerely. It really means a lot that uh, you're here watching me, even if it's still an experience I am struggling to get accustomed to. So anyway, I thought I'd do a little little bookshelf tour, as they call it, because that, that's a thing that booktubers do, right? Bookshelf tours. So anyway, here we go. So starting from the top here, um, in front of the Star Wars action figures, we got a whole bunch of sci-fi. Um, I really like these sci-fi masterworks editions for some reason, I don't know. They just look really cool when they match. We got a whole bunch of uh, philosophy stuff over here. Uh, and then moving down, my bookshelf is a bit like a archaeological dig site uh, because I never really got rid of all the books I had as a kid, which means that there are multiple layers denoting different ages. So yeah, I've got some Brandon Sanderson, Octavia Butler, uh, Beowulf, some Shakespeare, more Brandon Sanderson. I don't have like a designated Sanders shelf as I know a lot of fans of Sanderson do. Um, they're just kind of scattered around willy-nilly, which is a common theme in my bookshelf as you can see probably. We got some Neil Gaiman, Orson Scott card down here. Um, other miscellaneous things. This is actually pretty cool. This is a first US edition of The Sword in the Stone, uh, which I got for a pretty good price. Much less valuable than like a first UK edition of this book, but still really cool to have. And then on the bottom, it just becomes a total mess. I've not organized this at all. Um, I love these Norton Critical editions for classic books, but that's probably just because I'm an nerdy English major. And then over here, I got some random books sitting on the side because I ran out of shelf space. And then I've got this little shelf, which is half dedicated to Stormlight Archive, um, and then half to miscellaneous uh, works of classic fiction. All these editions I got for like $1 at a used book sale, and they all match, which is quite nice. So moving over to one of my other shelves, we've got a whole lot of J.R.R. Tolkien, a whole lot of Robert Jordan, and then a nice smattering of Game of Thrones in the middle, which I still have not read. Um, if Winds of Winter ever gets a release date, I might actually read Game of Thrones, but I kind of don't have the willpower for it at this point. I still do not have a complete Wheel of Time set, uh, which is very sad, but some of these hardcover editions are very hard to find, and I'm determined to collect the entire series in large format hardcover. You can see the failure of my efforts here um, with trying to buy hardcovers online and seeing that they don't match up with the rest of the books. And then I've got another shelf in here. A lot of this is classic works of fiction. We got some Charles Dickens, Ray Bradbury, a um, bunch of plays, miscellaneous sci-fi. Clarice Lispector over here is actually one of my favorite authors. The Passion According to GH is a masterpiece. And yeah, that's that's basically it for the bookshelves, other than um, 
other random books I have scattered around because I ran out of shelf space. Um, but anyway, thank you again so much for continuing to watch the channel. Um, and I have a whole lot of things planned, uh, which I can't wait to show you. Um, so stay tuned for that. And thank you.